Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses today. Uh, Ms. Frazier, the American Society of Civil Engineers has rated the state of U.S. infrastructure at a C minus and estimated that the capital expenditure necessary to close the gap to get to a B level, which they define as a state of good repair, is approximately $2.6 trillion. Now, not all of that investment has to be public investment. So my question for you is twofold. First, do you agree that having state-of-the-art, world-class infrastructure in the United States is essential not just to quality of life, but also to economic competitiveness and sustained growth? And how can Congress take action to make it easier for private sector entities with significant capital at their disposal to invest in necessary infrastructure improvements and construction? Oh, um, thank you very much indeed, Senator. Uh, it's uh, it's a really important question. Um, yes, I I do agree that um, the America having a far stronger infrastructure than it has today will be important both in terms of competitiveness of the country as well as an important um, source of uh, of jobs um, and growth going forward. Uh, the public private partnership has been shown to be. Um, a very successful one in this area um, where the government can step in and provide credits uh, and uh, other areas where there are gaps in a capital structure or help absorb some of the risks in it to enable new investors to come in and participate uh, in, in the investments is going to be a very important area. And it's one I think uh, I can speak for myself. We, we will be delighted to work, uh, work with your office on going forward. Thank you, Ms. Fraser. And would you similarly commit to working with this committee in my office to explore mechanisms that could make it uh, easier for private capital to support the development of clean energy production capacity here in the United States? I know that your bank has made some significant commitments in uh, terms of emission reduction. Yes, we, we would be delighted to do so. I think the development, as we've heard today, of new technologies in sequestration or in carbon capture and others will be absolutely essential in the transition ahead. We would be delighted to do so. Thank you. I look forward to those discussions. Uh, Mr. Solomon, I'd like now to turn to you. Could you please lend your perspective? Uh, what are the impediments and what are the opportunities uh, for improvement to public policy to unlock more private capital uh, for capital investments, improvements, construction of necessary infrastructure in the United States. So I appreciate I appreciate the question, Senator, uh, and I think that it it's it's important for us to try to unleash a lot of the private capital that exists or is earmarked uh, toward infrastructure. I think there's over two hundred billion dollars of private capital earmarked for investment in infrastructure in this uh, in this country. Um, I think that. Uh, finding ways to collaborate from a public-private partnership perspective uh, has always been a successful path to take. I think there are things that we can do to potentially expand activities by making certain tax-exempt financing easier, potentially for rural broadband um, or housing infrastructure more broadly. I think those are areas that would be worth exploring. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. I appreciate that. Mr. Diamond, I'd like to offer you the opportunity to respond to the same question, perhaps comment on uh, the statements made by some of your colleagues. Yeah, no, I agree with everything they said. And uh, I would just add that infrastructure is critical, but I would beg you, the Senate, to focus on the output, not the input. There's too much time is spent on how much money we're going to spend on stuff. Too little time is spent on who's responsible, what's it going to cost, what is it worth, uh, what are the, uh, and also you need to fix regulations. I've given this example many times. You can look at these examples around the country to build a rebuild a broken bridge between New Jersey uh, and Staten Island. It took 10 years to get the 49 permits that which they had to get sequentially. You know, if it's gonna take 10 years to rebuild a broken bridge to get those permits that the cost is higher, the risk is higher, private capital will not come in. And so you have to do those things together and you know, constitute what the outputs, how many bridges, and then you'll get full support of everybody if we have we know it's going to be effectively spent. We, this country has spent lots of money completely ineffectively, and that would be a very bad idea. Thank you, Mr. Diamond. Appreciate that contribution uh, to the discussion. Uh, Mr. Moynihan, uh, when we discuss some of the potential investments in infrastructure 
uh, for example, transit and transportation, clean energy, the energy grid. Can you comment as well, please, on the opportunities and the challenges faced by private capital interested in supporting these vital national? Well, I, I think uh, my colleagues have uh, outlined a lot of the questions and, and, and issues, so to speak. There is just a lot of money ready to be invested. It'll take um, some effort on the permitting and other types of a process to speed those projects along. Um, but the money is there, and in fact, it's being invested as we speak. So I think I'd encourage uh, a holistic view of this from the amount of money that the government can help to move projects faster, the amount of money that the private sector has, and then importantly, the, the atmosphere on getting a project done, which is required to speed these things along. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield. Thanks, Senator Russell.